AMD is pulling out all the stops on their next-gen RX 10,000 GPUs. But before I get to that, AMD really screws up with this response, and Nvidia has to admit that they have a major problem. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, with the 9060 XT finally being made official, some people are complaining about the addition of an 8GB variant. And one of those was this person on Twitter. He basically asked why in 2025 would AMD release an 8GB GPU? Good question. And in response, AMD's own Frank Azor tried to answer this question. As you can see, it says, majority of gamers are still playing at 1080p and have no use for more than eight gigabytes of memory. Most played games worldwide are mostly esports games. We wouldn't build it if there wasn't a market for it. If eight gigabytes isn't right for you, then there's 16 gigabytes. Same GPU, no compromise, just memory options. So I can agree with some of what he's saying here, but there are a couple problems with this. For one, this idea of it just being a choice, and options are nice, but the argument against that is that we should have 16 gigabyte GPUs for the same price as the 8 gigabyte ones, or at the very least, it shouldn't be named the same thing. Sure, they mention 8 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes on the packaging, but it's still a 9060 XT, yet with completely different performance. And to further prove my point here, he also mentions that it's made for playing at 1080p. Yet in their own documents, they make it pretty clear that they're targeting 1440p ultra settings. And sure, it's using the 16 gigabyte model for reference, but it says RX 9060 XT right at the top. So this is clearly made for two completely different segments. And he even goes as far as to mention eSports games. So it's like these are two completely different GPUs, yet they're both called the 9060 XT. Plus, even at 1080p, there are games that currently need more than 8 gigabytes, and I have no doubt that future games will see this trend grow rapidly. So if your argument is that it's only for esports games, it clearly shouldn't be marketed as the same GPU, just with a little less memory. Now, they likely just followed Nvidia's lead with the naming here, but that's not an excuse, and we should call them both out for this. Basically, this is a problem that both companies have, and we certainly should expect more from them. But first, the people have spoken. Micro Center is the number one tech retailer in the US according to PC Mag's readers, and it's definitely well deserved. And they sponsored today's video, so I can tell you just how awesome they are. For starters, they're one of the only places you can physically go that has everything you could want for a PC build. I'm not talking about a couple motherboards off in the corner, but a wall of motherboards, rows of PC cases, power supplies, all the RAM you could want, even custom wood water cooling parts. They seriously have it all. And they actually have helpful staff that know a lot about PC parts. I have no clue how they can do all of that and still have some of the best prices in the industry. But they do. And to make things even better, they're finally gearing up to open their Santa Clara, California store. They really mean it this time. It's right around the corner. Finally, May is their desktop deals event with awesome deals on over 150 desktop PCs. So check those out and info about their upcoming store down in the description below. And next up for today, we all know that the 12V 2x6 connector has been an absolute fail when it comes to higher-end GPUs. We've seen multiple RTX 5090s and even lowering cards melt thanks to the new connector. And that's in spite of Nvidia claiming that the 5090 wouldn't have these problems. Well, I think it's time Nvidia admits the issue because it's gotten to the point where PSU manufacturers are having to add a bunch of crap to their PSUs so you don't come home to a melted GPU. And this is where I've got to plug the new FTX flame tracing tees at meldstore.com. The t-shirt that won't catch anything on fire. Once again, that's meldstore.com. Now, as you can see right down here, it says, Seasonic plans to add a feature to its next generation prime power supplies that promises to solve the problem of overheating and melting 12VHPWR and 12V2x6 power connectors once and for all. It says, a set of sensors, a microcontroller, and firmware that Seasonic plans to incorporate into its upcoming prime power supplies 
will all work together according to the company. Although the production quality of cables, connectors, and the way people plug in their graphics cards have consequences, one of the key sources of the problem lies in the fact that the graphics card can create unbalanced loads on power rails in different circumstances, which can cause voltage increases and or current increases on the power supply side. This causes wires in the power cable to overheat, eventually melting them and damaging graphics cards. Okay, so how Seasonic plans to fix this is essentially two different things. First up, the contemporary premium power supplies can monitor their voltage output and current and can alert PC owners of malfunction. Seasonic proposes to use a special external device to tell users about the problem, as well as enable end users to monitor their connectors while using their graphics cards. But obviously, as it states, that doesn't work if you're not at your computer. And what they plan to do there, they've actually added circuitry with sensors that measure temperature and current on 12 2 by 6 power connectors near the PSU. If the temperature or current exceeds the design thresholds, next generation Seasonic Prime PSUs will not only notify the owner using an external device, but will also trigger over temperature and over current protection that the power supply already has and therefore shut down the system. Now, while I know a lot of you will likely think this is just wild, a PSU that has to add all of this just so your GPU doesn't melt, but I don't blame Seasonic for trying to solve a problem they didn't cause. If anything, this is mostly on NVIDIA. Now, I know that PCI SIG is governed by multiple companies, not just NVIDIA, but they're the ones who required AIBs to include this connector on their higher-end GPUs. So I really think this squarely falls back on NVIDIA. This is just other companies trying to make sure it doesn't happen. And I do see some people sort of annoyed. Well, what if what I'm working on is really important? Though I will say most people likely would rather their computer turn off, potentially losing some kind of document or something, than your GPU, especially if it's like a 5090, be damaged. With that said, you probably can turn this feature off. But regardless, once again, I squarely think this is an issue with NVIDIA. If they didn't cause this by forcing AIB partners to use this new connector, we wouldn't even be talking about this. And lastly for today, this story is a little old at this point, but not many people covered it, and I think it really proves that AMD is pulling out all the stops with their next-gen RX 10,000 GPUs. Remember that AMD has already confirmed that their next-gen architecture is codenamed UDNA, and that's because they're unifying their RDNA and CDNA architectures into one thing, which is sort of opposite of what they did when they went from their GCN architecture to RDNA and CDNA. Either way, this is clearly a big step for the company, and a Redditor actually compiled an overview of multiple patents that AMD has been working on over the last few years. These are all publicly documented, so we know they're real. And what he found is that, let's just say, AMD isn't playing around. As you can see right here, it says, the patents indicate a strong possibility of almost feature-level parity with NVIDIA Blackwell and AMD's future GPU architectures, likely as soon as RDNA 5 UDNA-based on the following dates. We might even see RT performance parity with Blackwell at ISO raster performance that's an identical FPS drop percentage-wise between architectures. He goes on to even state that if more architectural changes make their way into next-gen RDNA than those afforded by the current publicly available patent filings, then it is very likely to exceed NVIDIA Blackwell on all fronts. Now, we know that RDNA 4 was already a huge jump in terms of ray tracing performance for AMD, but if all of this makes it to UDNA, they could see that yet again. So to quickly go over some of these, we first have new BVH management, which is a huge one. Remember that I recently went over a claim that next-gen UDNA would get CDNA's dedicated BVH hardware, which really makes sense of why they're combining their CDNA and RDNA architectures. Moving on, we have traversal and intersection testing. It says there are many patent filings about faster BVH traversal and intersection testing. Then there's also patent filings mentioning linear swept spheres like functionality. This is important for RT hair, fur, spiking geometry, and curves. Multiple patent filings uh, covering ray traversal and hardware with shader bypass. 
basically tons and tons of stuff for ray tracing. This is obviously AMD realizing, okay, we've really gotten ourselves behind when it comes to ray tracing on RDNA and we really need to fix this. So it's clear that AMD is taking this seriously. And obviously I know a lot of people really aren't interested in ray tracing, but it's become pretty apparent that it's not going anywhere. So AMD definitely needs to catch up. And at least from this, it looks like they may catch up or even leap over Nvidia. Now I know that we're really just talking Nvidia's current gen GPUs, but who's to say that next gen is gonna be really much better in terms of ray tracing. It does seem like that performance jump specifically within ray tracing isn't that much better. It, it seems to be slowing down more and more each generation. Really not sure of course, but at least from this, AMD seriously isn't playing around.